Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, everyone. So we're just local here in Russell Square. Yes. And ready to read the Srimad Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. Canto 1, chapter 19, text 20, text 19. Um, the chapter is the appearance of Sukadev Goswami, so we're still waiting for him to appear. Let's see. Start with the invocation. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. All the great sages who were assembled there also praised the decision of Maharaj Pariksit and they expressed their approval by saying, Very good. <laughs> Naturally, the sages are inclined to do good to common men, for they have all the qualitative powers of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, they were very much pleased to see Maharaj Pariksit, a devotee of the Lord, and they spoke as follows. <laughs> The natural beauty of a living being is enhanced by rising up to the platform of devotional service. Maharaj Pariksit was absorbed in attachment for Lord Krishna. Seeing this, the great sages assembled were very pleased and they expressed their approval by saying, Very good. Such sages are naturally inclined to do good to the common man. And when they see a personality like Maharaj Pariksit advance in devotional service, their pleasure knows no bounds and they offer all blessings in their power. The devotional service of the Lord is so auspicious that all demigods and sages up to the Lord himself became pleased with the devotee and therefore the devotee finds everything auspicious. All inauspicious matters are removed from the path of a progressive devotee. Meeting all the great sages at the time of death was certainly auspicious for Maharaj Pariksit and thus he was blessed by the so-called curse of a Brahmana's voice. So it seems like this curse that was thrust upon Maharaj Pariksit <coughs> by the Brahmin boy actually turned out to be a blessing because it's manufactured and created auspiciousness. So this is the, the mood of a devotee that even something that seems inauspicious for someone who's fully dedicated to Krishna, things become very auspicious. So, like that. Ooh. Like this be. <coughs> yeah, it's just a matter of perspective because you can see obstacles as um, like negatively or like here, arrangement of the Lord. Yeah. So it's a matter of, and that's how we can get through life in a positive way. We can always see a cloud over our heads or it can be what wonderful opportunities Krishna keeps giving me to think of him and surrender. Hmm. I guess in one sense though, maybe more than perspective because once we're dedicated to the Lord, then the Lord is becomes directly involved in our life so he starts to move things around. Of course, it, it is down to the way that we interpret in a sense, and if we're really devoted, we interpret something in connection with Krishna. But also, um, Krishna himself starts to manifest and puts things on the path. I think you were even mentioning earlier this morning about how with one thing, Krishna is, um, is creating a, a situation where... Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, he's, he's bringing up. <laughs> See that dog? He just walked walk right up to the camera. So he must have, Krishna must have wanted that dog to hear the holy name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and scare the life out of him. But you see, I took shell tap as I chanted because I'm not going to lie, I slight freak out with it. That's why I chanted. That's why I chanted. So Krishna arranges circumstances. <laughs> Because he's in charge and we have to see his hand. But his hand is there because for a devotee his hand is definitely there. <laughs> see, what he did was Krishna did a practical demonstration of what we're like. Well, what I'm preaching from a so-called lofty place. So now we put it into practice. Because I could have, as you can attest, I would have, could have been worse. <laughs> so, Harry Krishna. <laughs> the helicopters are back out today, so it's all noisy here. <laughs> so quiet yesterday and uh, up in the Surrey Hills. 
Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Text number 20, I think, yes. The sages said, O chief of all saintly kings of the Pandu dynasty who are strictly in the line of Lord Sri Krishna, it is not at all astonishing that you give up your throne, which is decorated with the helmets of many kings, to achieve eternal association with the personality of Godhead. Purport. Foolish politicians who hold political administrative posts think that the temporary posts they occupy are the highest material gain of life, and therefore they stick to those posts even up to the last moment of, death, of life, without knowing that achievement of liberation is one of the associates of the Lord in His eternal abode is the highest gain of life. The human life is meant for achieving this end. The Lord has assured us in the Bhagavad Gita many times that going back to Godhead, His eternal abode is the highest achievement. Prahlad Maharaj, while praying to Lord Nasimha, said, O oh my Lord, I am very much afraid of the materialistic way of life, and I am not the least afraid of your present ghastly, ferocious feature as Nishringadev. This materialistic way of life is something like a grinding stone, and we are being crushed by it. We have fallen into this horrible whirlpool of the tossing waves of life, and thus, my Lord, I pray at your lotus feet to call me back to your eternal abode as one of your servitors. This is the summit liberation of this materialistic way of life. I have very bitter experience of the materialistic way of life, in whichever species of life I have taken birth, compelled by the force of my own activities, I have very painfully experienced two things, namely, separation from my beloved and meeting with what is not wanted. And to counteract them, the remedies which I undertook were more dangerous than the disease itself. So I drift from one point to another, birth after birth, and I pray to you, therefore, to give me a shelter at your lotus feet. Wow, what a nice prayer. <coughs> the Pandora kings, who are more than many saints of the world, knew the bitter results of the materialistic way of life. They were never captivated by the glare of the imperial throne they occupied, and they sought always opportunity of being called by the Lord to associate with him eternally. Maharaj Parikshit was a worthy grandson of Maharaj Yudhishthira. Maharaj Yudhishthira gave up the imperial throne to his grandson. And similarly, Maharaj Parikshit, the grandson of Maharaj Yudhishthira, gave up the imperial throne to his son, Jana Mejaya. That is the way of all the kings in the dynasty, because they are all strictly in the line of Lord Krishna. Thus the devotees of the Lord are never enchanted by the glare of materialistic life, and they live impartially, unattached to the objects of the false, illusionary, materialistic way of life. So there's some very nice quotes also about um, not being attached to position mm -hmm. and being willing and able to move on and, uh, and uh, handing it over. So succession mm -hmm. is really discussed here, succession planning. Text yeah. 21. <clears throat> we shall all wait here until the foremost devotee of the Lord, Maharaj Pariksit, returns to the Supreme Planet which is completely free from all mundane contamination and all kinds of lamentation. Purport. Beyond the limitation of the material creation which is compared to the cloud in the sky, there is the pravyoma or the spiritual sky. Sorry, the paravyoma or the spiritual sky full of planets called vaikuntas. Such Vaikuntha planets are also differently known as the Purushottama Loka, Achuta Loka, Trivikram Loka, Rishikesh Loka, Keshava Loka, Aniruddha Loka, Madhava Loka, Prajumna Loka, <coughs> Sankarsana, Sankarsana Loka, Shri, Sridhar Loka, Vasudev Loka, <coughs> Ayodhya Loka, Dwarka Loka, 
and many other millions of spiritual lokas wherein the personality of Godhead predominates. All the living entities there are liberated souls with spiritual bodies as good as that of the Lord. There is no material contamination. Everything there is spiritual, and therefore there is nothing objectively lamentable. They are full of transcendental bliss and are without birth, death, old age, and disease. And amongst all the above mentioned by Kunta Lokas, there is one supreme loka called Goloka Brindavan which is the abode of the Lord Sri Krishna and his specific associates. Maharaj Parikshit was destined to achieve this particular loka, and the great rishis assembled there could foresee this. All of them consulted among themselves about the great departure of the great king, and they wanted to see him up to the last moment, because they would no more be able to see such a great devotee of the Lord. When a great devotee of the Lord passes away, there is nothing to be lamented, because the devotee is destined to enter into the kingdom of God. But the sorry plight is that such great devotees leave our sight, and therefore is every reason to be sorry, as the Lord is rarely to be seen by our present eyes. So also are the great devotees, the great rishis, therefore correctly decided, sorry, the great rishis therefore correctly decided to remain on the spot till the last moment. So noisy here. Now they're cleaning the streets. I imagine that's a horrendous background noise. But <laughs> so supportive, everyone. So supportive. They're all going to wait there until. You know, it's not like sometimes you attend a course or classes at the temple or online. You're not always so fixed or focused, you know, seven days is a lot, one day after the other. And they, it says they're all going to wait here. We shall all wait here until the foremost devotee of the Lord returns to the Supreme Planet. So it's a scary time to leave your body anyway and to think you have that that amount of support not just one devotee but a whole assembly of them and they've made it clear we're not leaving until you're successfully at the lotus feet of the lord you know it must be very um sheltering mm -hmm. yeah like you said wonderful support and encouragement i guess also the <coughs> They realize they're also going to be benefited because they know that he's going back to Goloka, he's going back to the to Vaikuntha, at least to the spiritual world, and uh, whatever's going to happen leading up to that is going to be beneficial for everyone. But at the same time, like you said, it's they could have just been kind of like you know seven days. You know, I got a lot on my agenda, so it is wonderful. And also the fact that we don't lament for the passing of a devotee because it's very auspicious for a devotee when they leave this world because Krishna will look after them. At the same time, we do feel lamentation because of loss of their association, but not because of worry or concern where they're going to go. Their forward destination is assured. Text 22. All that was spoken by the great sages was very, was very sweet to hear, full of meaning and appropriately presented as perfectly true. So after hearing them, my correction desiring to hear of the activities of Lord Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, congratulated the great sages. Text 23. The king said, O oh great sages, you have all very kindly assembled here, having come from all parts of the universe. You are all as good as supreme knowledge personified, who resides in the planet above the free world, Satchaloka. Consequently, you are naturally inclined to do good to others. And but for this you have no interest, either in this life or in the next. Popop. Six kinds of opulences, namely wealth, strength, fame, beauty, knowledge and renunciation, are all originally the different attributes pertaining to the absolute personality of Godhead. The living beings who are part and parcel entities of the Supreme Being have all these attributes partially up to the full strength of 78%. 
In the material world, these attributes, up to 78% of the Lord's attributes, are covered by the material energy as the sun is covered by a cloud. The covered strength of the sun is very dim compared to the original glare and similarly the original color of the living beings with such attributes becomes almost extinct. There are three planetary systems, namely the lower world, the intermediate world and the upper world. The human beings on earth are situated at the beginning of the intermediate world. But living beings like Brahma and his contemporaries live in the upper world of which the topmost is the Chaloka. In Satchaloka, the inhabitants are fully cognizant of Vedic wisdom and thus the mystic cloud of material energy is cleared. Therefore, they are known as the Vedas personified. Such persons, being fully aware of knowledge both mundane and transcendental, have no interest in either the mundane or transcendental worlds. They are practically desireless devotees. In the mundane world they are nothing to achieve and in the transcendental world they are full in themselves. Then why do they come to the mundane world? They descend on different planets as messiahs by the order of the Lord to deliver the fallen soul. On the earth they come down and do good to the people of the world in different circumstances under different climatic influences. They have nothing to do in this world save and accept reclaim the fallen souls rotting in material existence, deluded by material energy. So this is the <coughs> origin of the Vedas and also mentions the word messiahs or people who are saviors mm. who come to this world to deliver others and, and take them back. Like the Prabhupada. Way. Like Prabhupada. Text 24 O oh, trustworthy brahmanas, I now ask you about my immediate duty. Please, after proper deliberation, tell me of the unalloyed duty of every, everyone in all circumstances, and specifically of those who are just about to die. Purport In this verse, the king has placed two questions before the learned sages. The first question is, what is the duty of everyone in all circumstances? And the second question is, what is the specific duty of one who is to die very shortly? Out of the two questions, the question relating to the dying man is most important because everyone is a dying man, either very shortly or after 100 years. The duration of life is immaterial, but the duty of a dying man is very important. Maharaj Pariksit placed these two questions before Shukadeva Goswami also on his arrival and practically the whole of the Srimad Bhagavatam, beginning from the second canto up to the last, the twelfth canto, deals with these two questions. The conclusion arrived at there, thereof is that devotional service of the Lord, Sri Krishna, as it is confirmed by the Lord Himself in the last phases of the Bhagavad Gita is the last word in relation to everyone's permanent duty in life. Maharaj Pariksha was already aware of this fact, but he wanted the great sages assembled there to unanimously give their verdict on this conviction so that he might be able to go on with his confirmed duty without controversy. <clears throat> he has specifically mentioned the word Shuddha, or perfectly correct, <coughs> for transcendental realization or self-realization many processes are recommended by various classes of philosophers. Some of them are first class methods, some of them are second or third class methods. The first class method demands that one give up all other methods and surrender unto the lotus feet of the Lord and thus be saved from all sins and their reactions. Powerful questions to be asking at mm. the end of one's life, of course. <clears throat> People may ask so many questions. What's going to happen to my money? What's gonna ha who's going to take care of the funeral? Um, things like this. How can I live? But uh, 
far as pariksit is concerned with two things. What is the what is the duty of everyone and what is specifically the duty of a man who's about to leave give up his body and uh, sorry. Um, and uh, who where, where is the duty of someone who's about to give up their body imminently or immediately? So that is the um, those are powerful questions to be asking at the time of time of death. Like that. Any thoughts? <laughs> Today's a day of interruption. <laughs> <laughs> We've got our own assembled people. Yes. Jesus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we attract other types. <laughs> Married for rich it attracted a certain level of sages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we attract dogs and <laughs> people. Okay. Text 25. At that moment there appeared the powerful son of the Asadev who travelled over the earth, disinterested and satisfied with himself. He did not manifest any symptoms of belonging to any social order or status of life. He was surrounded with women and children and he dressed as if others had neglected him. <laughs> now he has arrived. Popo. The word Bhagavan is sometimes used in relation with some of the great devotees of the Lord like Sukadev Goswami. Such liberated souls are disinterested in the affairs of this material world because they are self-satisfied by the great achievements of devotional service. As explained before, Sukadev Goswami never accepted any formal spiritual master, nor did he undergo any formal reformatory performances. His father, Vyasadev, was his natural spiritual master because Sukadev Goswami heard Srimad Bhagavatam from him. After this, he became completely self-satisfied. Thus, he was not dependent on any formal process. The formal processes are necessary for those who are expected to reach the stage of complete liberation. But Sri Sukadev Goswami was already in that status by the grace of his father. As a young boy, he was expected to be properly dressed, but he went about naked and was uninterested in social customs. He was neglected by the general populace and inquisitive boys and women surrounded him as if he were a madman. He thus appears on the scene while travelling on the earth of his own accord. It appears that upon the inquiry of Maharaj Pariksit, the great sages were not, un- were not unanimous. We're in- not unanimous. No. <laughs> were not unanimous in their decision as to what was to be done. For spiritual salvation, there were many prescriptions according to the different modes of different persons. But the ultimate aim of life is to attain the highest perfectional stage of devotional service to the Lord. As doctors differ, so also sages differ in their different prescriptions. While such things were going on, the great and powerful son of Vyasadev appeared on the scene. This interesting line, as doctors differ, so also sages differ in their different prescriptions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is really an <clears throat> important point, and actually, um, Krishna Dharma Peru and Mother Chintamani Dham, they, they bring this point out very nicely in uh, their book, um, uh, Brilliant as the Sun, where they've written out each canto of the Bhagavatam in such a way that it's like a story so you get the the real con you don't lose the context of what's what's actually happening and who's speaking so um in there they they really point out nicely i think it's at the beginning of the second canto in the beginning of the second book um about how the sages that were gathered there and we'll hear more about it as we continue to read here at the end of the first canto that the sages were from different backgrounds and different perspectives. There are transcendentalists, but there are impersonal transcendentalists, there are devotee transcendentalists, and there are the six, the sat darshans, the six different types of philosophical explanations that are accepted. There are different sampradayas. 
uh, who have different understandings of the ultimate goal. So doctors and or sadhus may have differing angles or perspectives. Of course, amongst the devotee community, we would hope that everyone is aligned uh, with their perspective, but the, the application may also be understood differently by different, uh, even bhaktas or different sadhus like that. So it's, a, it's a, quite a powerful situation that basically Parikshit, he was a bhakta, a real pure devotee, and he wanted to hear a specific kind of kata, but here he was surrounded by sadhus, and they had different angles and perspectives on what the ultimate truth is. And of course, l least we forget that he's just been cursed by a Brahmin because he offended a Brahmin. So he certainly doesn't want to make any offense to these sadhus. So it's described by uh, Krishna Dharma and Mother Chintamani that, that uh, Parikshit Maharaj just kind of kept to himself and was just listening. But he, inside he was praying deeply to Krishna, please send someone who will speak the Bhagavatam and, and pure devotion to Krishna. And of course, Shukadeva Goswami appeared. So like that. Hare Krishna. <laughs> okay, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, we are going to continue again tomorrow. Grantaraj Sri Ma Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Shiva Prabhupada Ki Jai. Go to Prince. Hare Krishna.